Well, this year's winter weather has not exactly been very predictable. While the temperatures have been warmer than normal, those sudden cold snaps can mean pet owners may not be prepared. Dr. Mike Hutchinson of Animal General in Cranberry joins us for some winter weather refreshers. Hi, Dr. Mike. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So I, I think we want to ask first, how cold is too cold for our pets? It's a great question. When we keep pets indoors, I think below 30 degrees is just too cold for pets. It's okay to be outside with them, but you have to judge them. I have a short hair pit bull. She goes out, goes to the bathroom, turns around, wants to come right back in right. when it's cold out. <laughs> My long haired shepherd wants to stay out there forever. So we just have to judge them, maybe put a sweater on them, but we have to be careful. They still need exercise because we don't want them to start gaining those extra pounds, but um, be, be smart about it. Don't overdo it and keep a good eye on them. If you keep pets outdoors, make sure they have plenty of fresh water and a little extra food because they need it to keep warm. It's so true, too, because our Kevin, he loves being outside even when it's cold. When we had that cold snap last week, he just did not want to come in. We had to force it, it, him in. It, it's unbelievable. When you have those dogs with long coats on them or those nice furry coats, huskies, long-haired shepherds, they love the outdoors. They yeah. love being out there when it's cold. It's their weather. Yeah, and one of the things you always talk about is like they can track in salt on their paws. Right. And you should be careful about that, right? Absolutely. When you bring them inside, I always tell people just take a damp cloth and wipe their paws because even the paw, the stuff that says it's pet safe for the paws, that even causes irritation. Um, GI, when they're licking it, it can cause mm -hmm. uh, gastrointestinal issues, but also it still causes sores and irritates them in between those digits in between those pads. So wipe them down. That's great advice, Dave. And I always recommend if, if you're having trouble and they're getting cracks in there, they do have a balm for paws, which is very effective. I like bag balm, but there's paw balm and there's other things that the mushers use. All right, let's talk a little bit about chocolate because, you know, it's so interesting. I've heard some people say that uh, their dog has eaten a whole box of chocolate chip cookies and been fine. But we know that chocolate can be lethal to dogs. So what is it and why is it some of it is okay? You know, it's not okay. It is a toxin for dogs because it takes them too long to metabolize. It takes them about three days to metabolize chocolate. It doesn't take us that long. So what happens is that it, I used to be in the ER doc and it takes about a half an ounce per pound of, of dog to kill them. Now, hear what wow. I'm saying. A half an ounce per pound. So a 10 pound dog eats a six ounce bag of chocolate. It could be, it could die from that. And that's wow. truthful. The, so we want to avoid it. It is a toxin. We want to keep it away from our pets. If they get into it, there is a little good news about it is the chocolate seems to ball up in their stomach. So we have about three to four hours to get it out. So um, I always tell people have hydrogen peroxide on hand, call mm -hmm. your vet, they'll tell you how much to give. And you can usually get out of that emergency as long as you have that on hand. How do you give them? Do you, would you put it in a water bowl? Um, nope, turkey baster and just put it right in their mouth. Oh, okay. It's fun. It's, I'm sure. I'm sure. Very stressful sure. situation all the way around. I've had to do it to my yeah. own dogs. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Finally, we, we hear that you have really a heartwarming story about an older dog. Yeah. You know, I, I had a, a client that came in and told me about her daughter that was going to the shelter looking for a younger dog. She was hoping it would be housebroken. And she had this older dog named Max. They gave it, it had a name and uh, just kept wagging his tail and looking at her. So she took it for a walk and she brought it home to introduce it to her, her children. And she said Max would go up to each one of her children and lean into them as if to give them a hug. She is now, of course, they adopted the dog. She said, Dr. Mike, it's the most wonderful thing. We're we go with that dog he looks back at it call his name he runs back and leans into us for that hug and it just tells you there's shelter dogs out there that are older that have that unconditional love for yeah. us and so you know think about them when you're going out to adopt as well it was just a great story oh i love that so much yeah. it's wonderful so, dr mike hear that because it, brought, it brought me you know, it, it brought me to tears when she was sharing a story. The two of us were in the room, you know, happy. <laughs> so. Well, thank you for sharing it with us, too. And what an important message. Absolutely. You're welcome. Right. Thanks, Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike you, Hutchinson I of Animal General in Cranberry is a regular PTL contributor. Look for him also on KDK Radio and his podcast as well. And next week, more from Dr. Mike. Safety tips when it comes to traveling with your pet on the road. So look for that next Thursday here on PTL.